Um, was there, uh, have you got a medical update on Sean Johnson last time he was being assessed? Yeah, I think, you know, what we know about Sean is he's a resilient lad, but uh, he's probably got two weeks before we'll see him back in the nets. Uh, you know, we, uh, we've been assessing him and made a decision not to push him too far, too early, desperate to play. Obviously, it's New York City and it's the game he wanted more than any, but, you know, he's got to put the team first, so it's going to be a long season. He's not getting any younger. We've just got to manage it. What is it? Uh, hamstring, yeah. He's tweaked his hamstring in training. What a there shame. A few others we saw sort of working out individually today. Um, can you give us an update on, on those guys? Yeah, everything's uh, individual care plans. I think big learnings uh, coming through the season is, you know, you really do have to individualise. We're learning about how people are coming out of games. Obviously, Longy came out at half time. Uh, with with just some tightness in his layers, so we're just managing his his uh, his load this week. Same with Davy Flores, a little bit tightness in his groin, so you know we're getting a little bit thinner in the squad. So with with the squad thinning in out, we've we've just got to wrap some bubble wrap around these people and make sure they're there for the weekend. Are those developing from the turf experience? It, it carries certainly it. it it carried from the turf, um, and, and I think those lads that A have never played on it, or B have got existing chronic stuff that gets flared up. So, you know, big lessons for us is you really got to manage those players that following week and make sure that, uh, as, as we've done this week, we give them a chance to just reset. Um, and we've got some turf games coming up. Uh, I think Charlotte and Vancouver is going to be uh, going to be interesting for us. And Richie? Yeah, Richie's about three weeks. Unfortunately for Rich, uh, again, it's a, it's a hamstring strain, and um, yeah, we're not going to see him for three weeks now. Real shame, but he's a quick healer. Uh, the medical team will say three weeks. I think it might be a little bit quicker. DeAndre. DeAndre is, could be available for minutes this weekend. Uh, he's played limited matches in preseason. That's my only concern. He managed to play, you know, a couple of minutes uh, against Columbus, and he played some minutes against Nashville. But that injury was picked up in the Real Salt Lake game, so he's still in preseason mode. Uh, we've just got to make sure we build him up uh, so he's ready to to come in and go full full intensity, so he could be on the bench this weekend. I guess this will be your first uh, visit to Yankee Stadium. Yeah. What are you expecting? Oh, excited. Excited. It's bringing us back to the narrow field of <laughs> Hamilton or, or Edmonton. You know, we, we purposefully narrow fields for certain matches, so I've had some experience on how to get the best out of your team on 64 meters, but apparently it's even smaller. Uh, then it's it's quartered us. So I had a good chat with Phil Neville uh, after the weekend game, and he said the pitch is, uh, is is beautiful. Like it's it'll play well, but you've just got to be ready. Like one pass, it seems to be in your box. So uh, we we narrowed all the fields in this week, and you know I've been training with that philosophy. I'm sure you must have studied uh, New York and how they've done so far this year. What have you made of it? Well, I think the, the the surgeon's knife team they they're very intricate with their their style, their play, but they came away from it first off last week. They were very direct. Um, I was really surprised how quick they went front to back, and they're very much like Charlotte. Uh, they they looked to to play into the channels and then pick up the second phase and and were prepared to win ugly. Uh, it, it sort of blew, I think, everyone away that watched just how direct they were. So I think, you know, the coach is willing to come away from his identity to, you know, to get the outcome he needs. And they played well the first 45 minutes. I thought the number nine got in behind quite a lot and they were able to get the little number 10 off the front on the second. So, you know, we've got to be ready for that. And we've got to be ready for them not being New York, given they just need to win. Given the start to the season, John, which has been perhaps not in your your mind, but unexpectedly unexpectedly good, 
do you have to kind of damp down expectations, or now you just have to live up to what you've done? If you know what I mean. I think what we've we've said right from the start is just one step, one game, one process. As long as we stay to the process, we know what our targets are. We know when we go to away games, what that means, what that's about, our style of play, and what it means to get a result on the road. So for us, it's just keep coming back to process. The noise outside of the team, I mean, some people are, I'd say, are looking for the wheels to fall off and, you know, hoping that that happens, you know, and others are just super excited that we're, you know, showing some, some signs of life, but internally, we're just back to process. Monday morning, we're reviewing the game. Tuesday, we're on to the scouting of New York and focusing on the targets for that game. Wednesday, we're into team selection. Thursday, we're rehearsing the tactical blueprint. Friday, it'll be set pieces and game on. So, you know, I think we said to the group, we'll review at phase three, at the end of phase three, where we're at, and we'll have to recalibrate either you know, to close a gap quicker or to, to consolidate and stay right on track with our processes. So, as I've said to the lads, the processes are here, they're working, but stick to them. Sean, you've managed uh, the way you've been in this through the first three games. Just curious, how, how have you held up? Uh, how has he done physically? And, is he, uh, and presumably he's, he's going to see some minutes on New York. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's in good good space at the moment, I think getting 80 minutes he, yeah, as I said to people last week he's still in pre-season mode he's, uh, he missed a lot of the pre-season from sort of January the 27th on the 30th of Jan he was you know, modified and wasn't able to push the, the limits so even to see him go to the 80th minute at the weekend was, was, was brilliant you know? and again he wants to stay in well you know, th there's a need for his his ability to uh, to win football matches. I think once we get into positions where we feel that we're we're comfortable, then we're into a management you know stage with Lorenzo again with the mentality of we're trying to build him up to get that preseason that he's lost. So you know we could be we could be up in the game against New York, and logically it looks like you should bring Lorenzo out just to manage him and protect him, but. At the same time, we're trying to build that durability. Hence, you know, at the weekend, one, we needed a goal, but two, we're, we're trying to get him as close to 90 minutes safely as we can. Can you refresh my memory, John? During preseason, did he have a knock, or was it just protectively you kept throwing him on very slowly? No, no, he was he was on fire. I mean, the Nashville game, you know, the, we played our start in 11 in that first 60 minutes, and 2 and a look, Lorenzo scored. Assisted for Fede, he was easily the man of the match. He was in a great space. And then when we came back on the turf, he just had a reaction to the turf. Um, you know, with that side he's had the ACL on, you know, the quad started to tighten and there was a little strain in and around the quads. And yeah, I mean, there was there's a few mechanical things started to happen where, yeah, if you pushed him on that preseason track, you were... Uh, you were going to put him in a danger zone. So we, we really pulled back with him and uh, and got some expertise in him. We brought Greg Bain from the men's national team to to do one-on-one uh, -on -one work with him and, and set him up for when it really mattered, which was the season. So again, right, we went 45 game one. This game he went 80, but if you look at his intensity from the 60 minutes onwards, you can see he's managing his intensity just to be available for you know, key moments in the game. So, you know, arguably we need a high level of output from an intensity perspective from Law, but we'll manage that if we're, we're down in a game. So I think uh, slowly but surely we'll get him up to 90 minute uh, potential, but even then when he's at that potential, you know, I'm looking at durability through the whole season and yeah, I'll manage his minutes as much as we can. And the dates were put to the League Cup games today, so you know when you're playing Pachuca and the Red Bulls. Your thoughts about that tournament and the opposition? Yeah, excited. I think it gives um, it gives you a break from 
the the just the day to day sort of MLS grind. It, it, it when when you bring a tournament in with a trophy, it gives a different focus and zest to particularly players that you might use in that tournament that may not be used as frequently in the league. So I mean, these are decisions. We said we would evaluate after phase three. You know where are we at? Our priority is the league. Uh, we've made that clear. Myself, Bill, Jason, and Andres. The league is our priority, and then we'll look at where we're at in the league and how that's progressing. To then evaluate whether you know the cups are something that we we really get after with a starting eleven, or you know we give opportunity for our sub core to to really maximise their minutes and. You know, compete. Chad, you mentioned that the, the, the importance of the next man up mentality that you're coming in, and so you're looking at some stuff like like with Sean. He said he was going to be out for a while. Richie's going to be out for a while. The three other players that we mentioned, you you just kind of bubbled on. How important is it to get that mentality again on Saturday? Because it seems like it's going to come back up. Yeah, and I think this is. Uh, this is the story of, of what TFC has been dealing with, I think, over the last year. And for me, it's one, doing the right things behind the scenes from the performance and medical department, working collectively to, to look for every 1% margin of game we can find to modify, to ensure that players are are more healthy more frequently. So everyone's on board there. People are working big hours. And then secondly, it's the repetitions that we're giving in training. It's the trust that we I think we put into the group through the preseason as well. There was a a lot of players that played a lot of minutes in preseason because we never recruited. We never really brought new faces in at the beginning of preseason. So a lot of lads uh, got reps, and and I'm pleased that those lads uh, got those reps because they they're stepping in. Like you think of Sigurd. You know, playing big minutes against LAFC, I thought that was um, you know a big moment for him because he showed his competence that we we all can trust him to come in and do a job. So yeah, next man up. Um, th there's a good feeling in the group at the minute, John. I think th there's a trust there, and I think when the trust there, uh, you're not sort of second guessing whether a guy's going to come in and put max effort in. I think that's one thing everyone can expect from. A player, and when you get that trust, other things start to follow, like you know, confidence. Uh, people come in more confident and not fearful of losing their shirt. They just they feel like they're just going to do a job for the team. We haven't seen Tyrese yet. Um, is he fully recovered from the uh, from the tour? Okay. Yeah, yeah, from the tour. I mean, it, again, he's he's sort of been building up preseason, so he's <coughs> been taking part in TFC two. So. He was able to uh, push, I think, 60 minutes. Uh, he did 45 minutes at the weekend as well on the turf. So, you know, to this week in training, he's been very close to the first team squad in terms of getting reps because he could be a next man up. He could be a player that could start the game for us or he could be a guy that has to finish it. I have two questions, Joe. I can see that. Uh, Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were making the move. <laughs> Is it just Oso and Flores call-ups internationally? Yeah, that's... Uh, yes. Yes, that's it, yes. And I think we're speaking to Raul later today. Uh, I just wondered if you could give us your thoughts on him. He seems like a, a valuable member of the roster with his versatility and, uh, and off the field, his experience, and also speaking Italian, I guess, is a big part of it. I mean, he's a, he's a class act. I mean, last season, I think, uh, what I could sense, he was playing with with low confidence uh, we, we've definitely given him some license and, and clarity um, he's enjoyed that wide centre back role because you know he knows he's the hybrid full back he's got that license to uh, join on the outside join on the inside and he's got a great relationship with Lorenzo I mean those two are friends off the field they spend a lot of time together and you can see that he's willing to to do that work that you have to do when you play around a player like him to create space, to move players, to block players. So he's, he's been an absolute uh, breath of fresh air. He's been one of my favourite players in this preseason. Just uh, I feel like he's grown strength to strength. Like you know, people said he's too small to be a centre-back, but 
he reads the cues well. He's an intelligent footballer. And uh, when we ask him to go into wing back, he, he puts the big shift in. Um, he's still growing. You know, I've said to him, he's got a wand of a left foot. We'd, we'd like to see him, you know, crossing more and getting into that part of the field to cross. But it's always difficult when you've got low because he's going to come inside and, you know, whoever's on that outside, it's typically a third man bounce. But, you know, ho hopefully we see a bit more of that from Raul. But his versatility, Neil, has been, been probably the biggest thing I can speak to. And that license to move up, I think Gomez kind of, well, we've seen that with Sheffield United. So, you know, recruiting them from Sheffield, they form their players in, in the back three. So five years in their academy, uh, we were able to see him play with that, that license to be that false fullback, that hybrid wide centre-back fullback. And we give him that license. You know, I think on that side, as often as you can, you're trying to create a plus one just there. Uh, Take some attention away from from uh, uh, Lorenzo, and you know Nick's is willing to do that time and time again.